Today on The Breakfast, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has identified and delisted 240 polling units across 28 states of the Federation. What does this, does this mean for the elections? Also on The Breakfast, economists say the adoption of a cashless policy in an economy forces people and companies to convert their paper money to bank deposits or deposits uh, with the hope of increased spending, what is Nigeria's future in a cashless policy environment? And don't forget, we have uh, some analysis of today's newspaper headlines. Well, we sincerely apologize for bringing you the program uh, behind schedule today due to uh, some technical reasons beyond our control, but we're glad. Uh, that we can finally come your way with the breakfast right here on plus tv africa my name is kofi bartels and of course uh with me this morning is mercy epopo will be starting with a look at the uh, top trending stories today and of course a lot to talk about as we usually say we bring uh fake conversations in the social space on your screens every single morning and uh, we'll start off with uh this particular story let's roll the tape Baby, <laughs> Wow, well, you can see there, uh, it's clearly a school bus, clearly a school bus, and uh, looks like that of a private school. Uh, you can see that the uh, bus was being lifted out from uh, a canal of sorts, and um, that, is, that, is, that is a bizarre one. It makes me, you know, makes me a bit of uh, feel somehow sick to see, because the school bus is meant to carry school kids. And if it's one of the private schools, like you're saying, it's a day, maybe a nursery school or a crash or something like that, uh, it, it's quite sad. Well, thankfully, no casualties were recorded when that school bus plunged into a canal while the driver was rushing to pick up students. According to uh, reports, the accident involved that school bus uh, and it had to be removed from a canal where it landed. That's really bizarre. And we thank God. We just thank God, really. Uh, when things like this happen, you just only can thank God. That's all you can say. Uh, it could have sunk, you know, and, and life, could, life could have been lost, you know. So when we hear that uh, the bus was removed by, uh, with the help of a crane, you can see that crane there, which means that it probably must have spent some time in the canal, uh, you know, and we just thank God, really. Um, all right, so that crane lifted the bus and, you know, packed it on uh, the road. It had been seriously damaged, as you can see from the video, and uh, details are sketchy, but we just want to thank God that that particular uh, incident recorded no casualties. Uh, and this, for me, I, I was speaking yesterday to, uh, to uh, a, a friend, you know, who very close, uh, a relative who, you know, happens to be a school administrator. Uh, and I said, you see, uh, you have to call your driver, uh, your bus driver, and just give the bus driver a warning, a warning, you know, and uh, tell him to take it easy when he's driving. Let him see this video. Okay, so it's a, a day and boarding primary and secondary school crash, nursery primary and secondary school, as you can see from the bus. Tell the driver, you know, to be careful. And I, I shared a story with, uh, with this relative of mine to say, hey, uh, I've seen school bus drivers, private school buses, speeding as if uh, there is no tomorrow. You know, I, that I saw one particular one, I was trying to get the number of, uh, the, on the bus to see if I could call the school 
and tell them the driver was speeding, you know. And, and, and some of these schools don't take particular care uh, to, to monitor the drivers because they have so much on their hands. So when they employ someone, you know, they don't test the person and then uh, they just put him on the wheels. And some of these school and the kid, the kids in the bus. So, you know, the, the kids can't shout on the, on the bus driver. They can't tell him, you know, usually he, uh, to slow down. You know, and then he's trying to rush up to meet with maybe a particular time for dropping the kids off or picking them up, up, you know, and then you have them at different parts of town, you know. So it's, uh, he has to rush sometimes just to meet up in time. Sometimes it's just his attitude, you know, the attitude of the drivers. I've seen it in time without number, you know. So it's a call, you know, to, to the schools, private schools especially in, in Nigeria, to take particular attention, monitor, monitor your drivers and see how they drive. You know, you know, let them know that they, they are being watched, they're being monitored. It's very important. We won't waste time because we've taken a lot of time already. Let's look at the next uh, top trending uh, story. I think we should roll the tape so you can understand where we're coming from. You know, my, my language, you say it's what is it's for you to see, not for you to be told. So let's see it and we'll come back to you. Not use your past to manipulate you. That is why we need to carry our and defend our faith. The past of the future, but he does not use your past to manipulate you. That is why we need to carry our and defend our faith. I'm sure if you've not seen that video anywhere on social media before, uh, you will be like, what just happened? Can we, can we roll it again very quickly, please? Because some people just see it for the first time and they'll be like, what happened? Can we roll that tape again one more time? The future, but he does not use your past to manipulate you. That is why we need to carry up and defend our faith. The past of the future, but he does not use your past to manipulate you. That is why we need to carry up and defend our faith. All right. So, yes, yes, yes. That's a, a rifle. That's a rifle. That's an AK-47 rifle. That's a, a Kalashnikov, what uh, they, they use in fighting war. If you've been in a war zone, you watch soldiers. That's a Kalashnikov, AK-47. Believe it or not. <laughs> and uh, that's a preacher. You can see the logo there if you... Uh, a good Christian like myself, you would know that that is the logo of House on the Rock, okay? I mean, I almost feel when he lifted it up like that, he swiped the, the gun up, I almost dodged from my seat right here. Because <laughs> you don't swipe up an AK like that, you know? Um, so that is the House on the Rock. Uh, his name is uh, Pastor Uche Aigbe. Pastor Uche Aigbe is uh, pastor of uh, the Abuja branch of House on the Rock. And uh, he caused quite a stare. Uh, amongst uh, many when during the second service, the second service of uh, their Sunday worship, he, Pastor Uche Agbe, uh, walked into the church carrying an AK-47 rifle. I'm sure some of the members were like, as Pastor, okay. Um, the pastor's entrance, of course, would have then gone on to cause uh, some sort of commotion and confusion and concern among members of the congregation who were trying to understand what was happening. Um, so he walked up to the lectern, aware of the tension he had created without looking at his worshippers. He then opened his Bible and said, some people are looking for my trouble and I came here prepared, is what he said. Some people are looking for my trouble and I came here uh, prepared. Um, so the preacher's statement threw the entire con congregation into a fit of laughter as he continued preaching on the, on the topic, guarding your hearts from false teachers. And faith without works is dead. And that's some, some of what he said, you know. So um, it was it was bizarre, all right, for a lot of people. And his actions sparked a lot of discussions about the role of firearms in church and the responsibility of religious leaders. You know uh, what they have to to do to make sure that they uh, stay on the right track. Um, you know, where um, a lot of people had views to to share on this. But I think one. Other uh, highlight of this uh, whole incident is that we must also inform you that uh, um, the police was uh, uh, invited the pastor, or we can say arrested him, 
and detained him for brandishing an AK-47 rifle on the altar. That's what uh, happened uh, following the, the leaking, let me say, of this video uh, right uh, after that Sunday service. Um, according to the police uh, public relations officer, that's uh, Muyua Dejabi, uh, he said that the uh, investigation had commenced on the incident. Uh, when you say, they say investigation, I don't know what the, the police will usually mean. They want to interrogate the, the, uh, the suspect. Because um, uh, for me, I always say that our police never investigate, hardly investigate beyond confessional statements. You know, oh, the suspect confessed to, to kidnapping this one and confessed. But investigation, is that, that's, is that all it's about? But anyway, they said they are, they are investigating the incident. Um, and uh, we hear that a police inspector, uh, Musa Audu, is the one who handed the gun over to the Abuja pastor. Because you'll be wondering, okay, does he have an AK-47 rifle or not? So uh, an inspector of police handed the gun over to him. Uh, his name is uh, Musa Audu. And uh, we also hear that uh, the commissioner of police in the FCT, uh, that's Nigeria's federal capital territory, Abuja, uh, Sadiq Abubakar, has made a recommendation uh, to the Inspector General of the Nigeria Police Force, um, Al Kali Usman Baba, to dismiss the inspector, the police inspector, uh, Musa Awudu. So that's what we hear. But interestingly, uh, we hear also that he'll be facing an orderly room trial uh, going forward. What an orderly room trial means, excuse me, is that um, if you are a police officer accused of any infringement, they have what they call, you know, in, in America, they call it internal control. Uh, in the police service there. It's an internal control. It's a sort of a police um, unit. Uh, talking about the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the, the marshal. I'm trying to get the correct thing, but it's not coming back. Okay. So the police, they have what they call their, their marshals. And uh, what the marshal does is that they uh, investigate and then they, they try police officers who are erring, who have been found wanting, they actually have a trial, all right? So they'll take their belt off, take their cap from them, you know, detain them, and then match them in before uh, the, uh, the officer in charge. It's called, um, it's a something martial, okay? So that's what happens. Sorry about that. I just went blank, you know? So um, uh, in the army, I think they call it a, a guard room or something like that. So. It remains to be seen if he will be dismissed as uh, the recommendation has been made. Um, but the church has released uh, a statement. I just want to go to that right now. Why uh, our pastor mounted the pulpit with AK-47. I just want to read a statement from House on the Rock. Okay. And um, what the church is saying that is that uh, uh, he carried the gun to illustrate his message to the congregation. So it was simply an illustration. I want to read the exact words of, uh, of the church. So the statement reads, quote, on Sunday, February 12th, uh, a resident pastor of House on the Rock Abuja Church, Pastor Uche Aigbe, in a message about fighting the good fight with spiritual weapons, carried an unloaded gun to illustrate his message on guarding your faith. Uh, pastor Uche has been a leader in House on the Rock Abuja since 1999 and has always shown exemplary leadership. However, he realizes that even with the best of intentions, carrying a gun to illustrate his message was ill-advised and regrettable. He says, without hesitation, Pastor Uche has uh, acknowledged the gravity of his actions and apologizes unreservedly for them. He says, as a church, House in the Rock um, rejects all forms of violence and we stand on the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which embraces peace and goodwill for mankind, or for all mankind. We're cooperating fully with the authorities as the, they carry out the investigations into this incident, and we will continue to engage internally to ensure this break in protocol does not happen uh, again, is what uh, House and Rock is saying. All right, uh, so, so that's that. Uh, I think we can move on from that incident and we'll wait to see if uh, the uh, the police will indeed dismiss the inspector who handed uh, a police weapon a police weapon an ak-47 to uh, a pastor so he could preach with it you know 
the, 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 the word I was looking for, the name I was looking for, was Provost Marshal. Yes, yeah, so the police they have what are called a provost marshal who is like their own judge. You know, when you, you go to the court and you face trial, they have their own internal trial. So the provost marshal will um, gather the evidence if there are witnesses, invite them. You know, uh, for instance, when I had a um, uh, uh, human rights case with the police and some officers, uh, you know, did what they did to me, you know, I, laid a, I didn't actually lay a complaint, but the police invited me to uh, attend the trial. And the officers that assaulted me were marched in, you know, before me. And the provost marshal interrogated them and then interrogated me. They had a chance to interrogate me and they took his notes, you know, and then he would make his recommendations to the authorities, the CP or the IGP, as the case may be. If it's dismissal, you know, that's what he'll, uh, he'll say. But he, it's, not, it's, not, it's not always um, uh, usual that you see the police recommending that one of them should be dismissed, you know. So we'll have to keep our eyes on this. Um, some people will say they can bet that this inspector will not be dismissed. Maybe he'll be transferred somewhere else. Maybe not. We will see what happens with that. Um, but the jury is out as to the, um, the, the, you know, the, the judgment that the, <laughs> the pastor exercised. And the question, are pastors always right, will, will pop up at this point. Are uh, clergymen always right? Because in this part of the world, they're seen as next to God. All right, next to God. In fact, they're seen as in some 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 congregations, uh, members see their pastors as God. Really, yes, 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 because they believe they can do everything. You know, believe their pastor sticker on their car will save them from accident. Their pastor sticker on their door will save them from uh, 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 arm robber. So, I mean, some some Christians see their pastors as God. Actually, so some see them as next to God. Some see them as God. Um, but I think this this should go a way to show that. Uh, pastors are human beings. Sometimes they are wrong. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes pastors are wrong. Not everything a pastor says is right. You'll be a fool, a big fool, if you take everything a pastor says hook, line, and sinker. You'll be stupid. Because even the Bible says that you should test everything. Okay, with the, with the scripture, with the word of God. So if a pastor is wrong and he makes a mistake and tells you to do something, uh, you go set the scripture, pray about it, and see, okay, what is saying? Is it, is it true? Okay, that's, how, that's what you have to do. Okay, even sometimes Paul himself will tell, you know, in the scripture, say, I'm not the one, it's not God speaking through me now, this is me telling you how I feel. All right, so we need to make that distinction. We need to realize that before the term God, there is, there are the words man of. Okay, for me, I never, I never get carried away when a clergyman makes a mistake or does anything that is controversial. Because why? They are men first. Man of God. Man. And as a human being, he is not, you know, an angel that can appear and disappear. He's a human being. Okay? He breathes in air. He can make a mistake. And if he makes a mistake and I see that he's telling me to do the wrong thing or acting wrongly, I will not jump with him. I won't do what he's saying. I'll say, see what my scripture says. No, this is not right. Okay? And when he makes a mistake, I won't judge him. I'll say, hey, he's a human being. I also make mistakes too. All right? And <laughs> let him go and, you know, God will forgive him. That's it. So um, I think we're just going to leave it at that for now. We'll take a break and then when we come back, we'll look at what the papers have for us. Please stay with us.